Welcome to Brazil International Talk Show. I'm Suzanne Thorson, and we are a team of Brazilian and Hispanic entrepreneurs based in South Florida. I invite you all to discuss with us um, and understand a little bit uh, the challenges that foreigners can face while living in the United States. Our objective is to discuss subjects of interest between the Brazilian Hispanic communities and facilitate partnerships within the United States. Now the hosts will introduce themselves. Aloysio Vasconcelos, please. Aloysio, your, your mic, can you please open? I am the chairman of the Brazil International Foundation, and uh, I was also the founder of the Brazilian Business Group uh, based in Broward County. We are honored to have today Mr. Douglas Heiser, the one who invited us to start recording this show. Hi. Hi. How's everything? Thank you very much to have me here in the show. And I'm Douglas Heiser. I'm the founder of the Book Return Tribune. And then I'm an entrepreneur here in the United States for 20 years and so. And uh, Book Return Tribune is one of my business. I have a couple other business as a soccer team as well. <laughs> and thank you for inviting me to be in the show. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Mary Sol Gonzalez, please. Uh, thank you, Susan. Hello, everybody. My name is Marisol Gonzalez. I'm the CEO for the Hispanic Entrepreneur Initiative based in Boca Raton, Florida. Uh, your turn now, Rafael Salas. Hello, everyone. My name is Rafael Salas. I'm a partner of Turnkey International Management, or Turnkey. I'm a civil engineer and have an MBA from Florida Atlantic University, uh, emphasizing entrepreneurship. And uh, I'm also an entrepreneur in Florida for eight years. Thank you. And I'm Suzanne Thorson, founder and creative director of Brazilian Beat. We offer all types of live entertainment for 
like events. And we are based in Boca Raton, Florida. Well, our subject today is entrepreneurship. As you all know, the prospect of setting up a business abroad um, presents even more challenges when for the foreigners, right? Uh, I invite you all to discuss the main challenges that incurred on your business lives and maybe share some tips with us, okay? Who would like to start? Rafael, Douglas. The microphone, Eloise. Yeah, Eloise. I could address, start addressing Rafael from Turkey. It's okay with me. Uh, not questions yet. I would like us first to discuss entrepreneurship. If we can just debate a little bit uh, the challenges that happened. I'm going to give you an example. With me, uh, the main challenge was business writing. You know, when you start to communicate with people, uh, Americans, you know, we need to understand how they speak. For example, Latins speak too much, right? And me, even more. So we have to adapt and be more precise, focus on what is important. Because here, they all say that time, time is money. They, they need to really go directly to the point. So you need to adapt and understand how is here so that you can compete in the market i would like to hear a little bit oh, uh, this uh i believe susan that you talk just a uh, uh, small little piece of uh, uh the the challenges for an entrepreneur that is the cultural aspect like the, the environment that you're gonna find when you are migrating to the US, coming here and start your business here. So I have a, a significant international experience. I live in five countries and I see that uh, uh, every country, every place has different rules, different culture. And it's very important for the entrepreneur to uh, uh, raise the information, to understand about the place that you're gonna start the business. So uh, planning is, 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 is a key uh, in this strategy. You need to have a strategy to go to that uh, country and uh, uh, understanding the study, doing the market study, uh, studying the, the laws, the regulations, the taxes and everything and uh, information. You need to gather information and put together and understand first because frustration happens when your expectations are not matched and then when you do the planning before when you study before you are gonna eliminate or gonna manage frustrations and you're gonna understand more about the risks that you're gonna you're gonna face you're exactly right for example a person that had was successful in brazil like with a business doesn't mean that he will be able to repeat the same formula here right it's completely different so exactly. uh, anyone can give other examples like challenges that you faced yes uh one of the challenges uh that i faced i was helping my brother uh to put an event together here in Boca Raton. He has an events company in Venezuela. He has done events throughout Latin America for 30 years. So we started doing this event in Boca Raton, but just the permit process, it was very challenging because every time we got a permit, a different one was required. And not only we had to go to the city for permit, but we had to go to Palm Beach County for county permit. Then we needed to find uh, if the police had to be present at the event, if uh, we needed, you know, the extra license for this or for that. So just the permit process took a long time. And we actually suggested to the city, could you start giving these little workshops or something of 
how to put an event together here because the process takes a long time just because you don't know how. Exactly. No. Also, uh, I think that Rafael mentioned that you need us like various like types of uh, uh, professionals assisting you. And when you first arrive in a country, you don't know who is the good, good accountant, who is the, the right lawyer, who is the, the, the person like that really has the skills that you need. So even to navigate and start uh, finding the right uh, partners, I think it can be a challenge also. Yeah, uh, I I think the is all together. I think it's all together. I the, the number one the everything you the guys mentioned here is, is right. For example, uh, uh, um, the first thing, and uh, you cannot and uh, assure that you are, if you are a successful business owner in your country, you're going to come over here and replicate exactly like you did before. This is what uh, and Marisol said about the event of his brother, her brother, and Suzanne said as well. There are um, the things are different. The, your your product, your service, and have a different approach over here, definitely for hundred percent. Because one of the difficult things is that, it, like Susanna said, the culture, the culture is different for everything. I uh, uh, this happened a lot with the restaurant business. Because they come in with a flavor for whatever and come over here and they think they go, I'm going to teach them how to eat the real food. Listen, give them a break. The, the people think that the Taco Bell is a Mexican food. And, and, then, and then they think the Olive Garden is an Italian food. But this is the Italian food for American market. That is the Mexican food for the American market. And if you're going to replicate feijoada, this is a typical dish from Brazil over here, you're going to be broken because nobody's going to eat that thing because it's ugly. <laughs> don't, don't matter how successful you, you are being in Brazil with your 100 and, and restaurants who only sell feijoada, you're going to fail here for sure. And, and, and planning is important because if you're planning before, you're going to know everything while you're talking here in advance. But what's happening is, and and then this is going to put as the number one challenge. What's happening is the people want so hard to make success in the United States. They want to move over here to know and live the American dream that they forget everything and then they're just coming. And then uh, 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 I know you have a dream. We all uh, had a dream and still having dreams as today, but what's going to make your dream not coming true is your you become blind of the steps that you need to go. Come down, you're going to have your time. I remember in Brazil they have a, a quote that say, "Oh, if the horse come in front of you and prepare to 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 walk, just jump in and go." No. In America, don't work like that. If the horse is coming to you, and maybe it's not that horse waiting for the next one, it's not because you have an abundance of horse, because you need to go in the right spot, in the, in the right moment, with the right product. I think anxiety is the number one challenge for foreign entrepreneurs, because they want to live the American dreams. They want to leave their country because of security, because of instability of political things, because of stability of financial, the, the economy is going up and down. And then they say, I go to the United States, because there is a paradise. Yes and no. It's not the paradise, it's close to you. But you have a lot of things to do before. You know what I mean? And, and, and I think this is the big, biggest one challenge. The, the hard desire for the entrepreneurs coming and be successful and, and tell themselves that he, they are successful. This is my thought. Oh, you're right. Luis, you want to speak? It's uh, in addition to the, all the psychological aspects, which are many, uh, we have, there are some rules that have to be followed and they very clearly establish it. Uh, a lot of the so-called Brazilian entrepreneurs, and I don't want to put anybody down, 
They were a successful in Brazil in a different environment where they had the special facilities and things of, of, of different sorts. Uh, what I learned in school here and I applied in life uh, while I worked for Xerox, for instance, which I saw, uh, I worked for them as a young guy when they were uh, expanding in, in, in Latin America. And, uh, and later I applied this in Citibank as well because I was heading a group that was, a new group that was established in South America and part of Europe. The thing is, if I want, uh, you have to have three professionals in your side, a lawyer, an accountant, and uh, a very good uh, counselor. Uh, counselor, I mean a, a person that is in, in general business, so he can plan, he can help you to, to understand things, and, and take you around where you, you, you are and to do what you want to do. If you don't do that, we, you lose time, money, and uh, then I address specifically what uh, Suzanne mentioned, that how do you know who is good, who is bad? Well, usually these people, the accountant, the banker, uh, they know uh, who is good in the community. So they help you and they recommend the best guys that they know, because you are a client already. So it, it's, and you have to trust. Uh, maybe, in, uh, and being talk, I, I talk about Brazil, we are not so honest in Brazil in, on, on the daily life. So uh, we have a tendency to mistrust. And this has to be overcome. And it's not just with uh, seminars. You, you have to also practice and follow good examples. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. Um, uh, coaching is very important, right? If you have the opportunity to practice, for example, a little bit before you go on the real business, if you can practice with someone that has similar activity, what you want to pursue here in the United States, I think it helps a lot. Because uh, another thing that, in my opinion, uh, the vision, our vision as Latins, is different than the American. Uh, as Douglas said, for example, a restaurant comes here even for churrasco, that is so famous, but the American doesn't like salt. <laughs> so they have to adapt so that the Americans will eat our traditional food. Uh, I'm lucky because my husband is American. And so I have beside me that other vision that he can show. Sometimes I ask him and he says, no, you know, like we don't do this or we don't understand that way. Try this other. And that's what a coach will do with you have to really help navigate on on the different aspects of the, the the community and i agree with rafael each and and a country has a different dynamics you know so you really have to pay attention and try to uh, mold yourself, your behaviors, the way you speak and everything so that you can compete in the market. Susan, another uh, important thing is, I think we need to do more research. Everything goes back to do your due diligence. Even before you come to the country, you need to start finding out even the cost of living even about where your children are going to go to school from, uh, what are the laws in the countries, how you establish the business. But once you get here, there are a lot of resources for entrepreneurs. A lot of these resources are even free of cost. So do your research, find out that this is small business administration, there are the chambers of commerce, there are groups like the Hispanic Entrepreneur Initiative, we offer trainings and help them navigate that transition into come, becoming entrepreneurs in this culture. So see what is out there and use those resources because then you have more chances to succeed. Yeah, well, I would like to add that uh, in Marisol's uh, experience with uh, her brother, that uh, uh, the information, they, they come here to, to do the event 
and they didn't know about the permits that they need to put in place. So this, this is a huge example that uh, the lack of information uh, is not that they are not doing because they don't want to do. They don't know. It, and this uh, can, can bring a, a high risk for the business. Uh, you can uh, uh, have a lot of costs related to not having the proper information. And when you're moving to another country, you need uh, help. You need to, to listen from people that have the information. You need to listen from, uh, uh, sometimes they use family, they use cousins, they use friends, but uh, they don't know about your business. They don't, they, they're gonna give some opinion. So it's very important to look for people or professionals or friends that really know and understand about your business and give you the proper information or at least the way where you can find the information. We're going to guide you. So it's very important to get information from consultants or from uh, people that you can trust but that has experience in this business. So this is going to uh, eliminate the risk of uh, not knowing what to do. And this is really important too. Yeah, and the, uh, you're definitely right. Uh, and and people must understand that he, Aloysius phone worth more than a million dollars with the contacts they have there, yeah. and the same, uh, the same as Rafael's phone number. Um, and, and and because if when you come over here, you you need the right persons to contact, and then going to save your time and and and, and going to save and going to send the, those people's going to send you the in the right direction uh, i'm coaching a couple people when they coming over here to open their business I, I just introduced them the right professionals and then i have a very good example for a corporation who is trying to do business in the state of florida as now and then he, i'm coaching them and he sent me the proposal for the vendor when I write the proposal, I say, guy, are you joking? 10-page hmm. proposal. I say, nobody going to read 10-page proposal. This is completely wrong. Oh, but I'm explaining everything. Man, forget about uh, uh, you. You can need put this like a Twitter. <laughs> this was Twitter is so popular here. You need to be short in the term. And then after a couple of hours talk with them, uh, and we will agree with it. Okay, you want to see the 10-page. But sent as an attach. The proposals is one page, and the other ten page you put. And uh, this is appendix. If you want to look at, okay. And then you know what? The company there even open their tent. <laughs> they going to close the business then just for one page. You, they was waste a lot of time and energy to write like a bunch of information, but the guys who want to buy the service, they know, okay, I want this price and what are you going to do? And done. Now, 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 and his partner in Brazil, this is an example who's happy now. Say, okay, we're going to write the contract. I told him, no, you need to find an attorney here to write the contract. It's not going to be a Brazilian attorney who know international law, who going to write a contract with a with the, the state of Florida, you must write it. Uh, oh, it's too much expensive. Okay, but look how much money you're making. This is part of the process. And people really need a coach. And they have a lot of consulting companies uh, and, and then they have, but at least a coach, somebody to go with you in the, this process to tell you where you need to go. And, and this is completely true, completely true. Yeah, and it can be like a, a consultant, can be a coach, can be also another company that you are looking for to be a partner here. Exactly. This is gonna eliminate a lot of risks because they are already here. So we have like a, several steps that we can take to eliminate the risk of failure. Yes. And uh, it's important to talk to people who have the information for you. Yeah. Yeah, people and don't value it's, that. It's very dangerous because nowadays you have a lot of people saying that they can provide information for you, but they don't know yeah. what they're doing. So yeah. it's important to do your due diligence. Go online, look for the reputation of the company you want to, to hire, look for the reputation of the people, 
go around, ask around, because this is also really important to do. Yeah, this is very interesting because with the media, the social media world today, anyone can look great as a million dollar company with a nice website, nice <laughs> and like social media accounts, and then people believe in everything they say, they look at. This is a, this is definitely true, Rafael. Do your diligence, look before. I, 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 this, this is important. And um, I would suggest every time that one person speak, if you can put on the screen the website of their company, it's great because if our the people that are, are watching us, for example, and want to contact Rafael Sales or Aloysio, uh, Marisol, they know where to go. I saw that Douglas, the website was there but I think it's always important to facilitate this process as well. And at the end of the show, we will have also this information, okay? So um, let's then begin the Q&A uh, so that we can ask each other like what we, we would like. Aloysio Vasconcelos, I imagine, has uh, the first question. Too fast, so I'm gonna say now, the, I'll make the question. Uh, it's to Rafael. We understand that Turnkey from Boca, your company, is willing to implement the integration of Brazilian and American innovators, willing to expand to international markets, either selling their products and or seeking partnerships, enhancing their activities in South Florida. How do you perceive such a movement in the direction of South America and to some extent also Europe? Well, uh, Turkey, uh, we, we started like uh, about uh, six years ago with uh, experienced professionals that uh, have more than 25, 30 years in the United States and that has like master in business and, and so on. And uh, we put together the company to provide like a very specific consulting regarding the strategy and the planning for the company to move to the US. And in doing so, we established a great network. We already had networks and uh, we start a, a, a conversation with the research part of uh, FAU, uh, Florida Atlantic University, about four years ago, when uh, we signed a memorandum of understanding with them, and we started like uh, uh, bringing the research part grant to Brazil and look for entrepreneurs there and companies to, to come here and, and take advantage of the research part area and infrastructure. So uh, we signed an agreement with with the research park an official agreement a month ago and now we are turnkey is the official representative of the research park at florida Atlantic university in brazil so we go to brazil to some events and we look for uh in uh, technology companies uh the, the profile to, to bring the companies here and they see a huge potential of companies to come to the u.s market because u.s is huge we are the biggest market in the world. Like uh, if I say that Florida, just uh, last year, we, we had a, a GDP of uh, $1.1 trillion. And the GDP in Brazil was $1.9 trillion. So uh, we had 10 million people. Brazil has 200 million people. So we have a huge market. And the GDP in, in the United States is $21 trillion. So, we are talking about the biggest market in the world. So it makes a lot of sense for companies to come here and expand here in the U.S. or even for entrepreneurs to bring their ideas here and implement in the U.S. market. is the biggest market in the world. I, I really think it's, it's a great step for any company. Excellent. Uh, my question now would be to Douglas Heiser, please. Me? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, Douglas, are you aware of some financing avenues 
open to Brazilians or Hispanic Americans that uh, want to start or looking to open a business here in Florida? No, no. SBA is always a, a, a good a, a good resource. You, you, we can go to SBA, and, and, and but again, I strongly recommend you to get a good advice or have a good company to help you to try to get access over there. You can try to do yourself, but you know, again, you'll you be harder because of all the documentations that you're going to need, all the informations. Uh, I really recommend you to find somebody who can and help you with that. And then you have a bunch of companies that are able to do this for you and charge you a success fee. Like if they get the, the, the resource, they, you give them a percentage for that. And I think... You, this would be much easier than going to the banks because the banks they have a high uh, high charge for this and also they going to ask for a lot of collaterals and, and this is my first thought but i didn't know that when i came here 20 years ago exactly <laughs> None of us knew. i agree with you <laughs> that's why i wanted to ask you know because there are even grants you know, uh, United States is a place that they really offer many, many avenues, you know, many uh, possibilities. Rafael would like to add something. Yeah, it's just to, to uh, complete what Douglas was saying, like SBA is a good place, not only for uh, getting financing, also for getting a lot of information. But uh, I, I also say that there are some brokers here that, uh, that are the professionals that work with uh, financing that they they work with hard money that is money from investors uh to invest in new companies and, and we have a huge market here and uh we uh, in our network we have like brokers and, and people that we can refer to the companies that can help the company to write rise finance too and also we we have like uh, uh private investors looking to invest in in, in good business so when you have like a good company coming here, sometimes we also introduce to good investors. Exactly. Some of the visas that people come here, it's an investor visa. So they are demanded to invest in something that will generate um, um, like jobs for Americans and there are several things that have to be followed. So I do agree with you. There's a lot of money circulating of people that want also to invest in something that they believe. So yeah, you just need the guidance because as Douglas said, when we first arrived, we don't know about all this. That's why I think it's important to discuss. Mary Saul, I think you yeah. had something. Yeah, not only the, the guidance, but like we said at the beginning, the advice of a good lawyer, uh, especially when you are dealing with investment and money that you are borrowing, always check those contracts, always get advice. Yes. You, you also, uh, and if you do your homework, like you're saying, bef before I arrive, you may find a city or a county that are willing to give you money to establish your business over there. And they have some areas in the United States and even Florida and that they need create jobs over there. If you create jobs for them, the, the county and the state and the cities, some cities, some counties, some, they are willing to give you money for you to establish your business over there. Uh, uh, the, the one closest that I know here from Boca, with everybody who wants to live in Boca, is Riviera. Riviera City is giving grants there for you to open a business in Riviera. And Riviera is, is very 30, maybe 30, 40 minutes from Boca. And, and, and um, it's a good one. I have, they have states other than Florida they are heavily given grants for you to bring your business over there. I have a friend who has a business for all the day that's moving everything to North Carolina. They give them a lot of money to move their, their industry to North Carolina. 
And but again, you need to do your homework. You need to have the right person to to guide you from that. Another good resource, I'm sorry, is Enterprise Florida. When you mm -hmm. are thinking about bringing a company here, reach out to them because uh, they have also the connections and uh, they see the size of your business and what you can do. So Enterprise Florida is a great resource. Yeah, yeah. But how do people going to know about Enterprise Florida? They need to have the right assistance. For example, and Hayes doing a, 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 a Hispanic Entrepreneurship Initiative is doing a great job to help all these people to get resources and get connection with the with the government institutions over here. And, and then it's another it's another good thing that is not in the question, but I'm going to come back for something you said. If you come over here, and I strongly suggest you to join one of those organizations, um, Brazilian Best uh, and Business, uh, uh, no, BBG, yeah, uh, and, and like, uh, or Hey, because there are people, they are Brazilians, they are Spanish, they are here, and they already have business, they can help you start to look for those good professionals that you're talking about here. And give you some good, very good advice. This is the, this is something you must do. Join here and join one of those organizations, definitely. Yes, you're right. Brazilian Business Group, Brazil International Foundation, Hey Florida. There are many, many. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Aloysio Vasconcelos, would you have another question? I will insist in Rafael because uh, what Marisol said also has to do with Rafael and also our good friend uh, Douglas. Uh, I say, from the practical standpoint, Rafael, do you know of any example of a successful venture classified as an entrepreneurship success between the United States? Preferably, if possible, involved in the Research Park Center at, at FAU, uh, but always in relation to Brazil. So as an entrepreneur success between the United States and Brazil, a, a case success. Yeah. When you talk about uh, this kind of success, we have uh, always here, we are entrepreneurs from Brazil and we are successful in the United States. So this is a, a great tenure with successful entrepreneurs too. And uh, talking about the, the research part, we have a great story to tell that is a company called Decora. Decora uh, is a company that developed a 3D image uh, to sell uh, instead of like uh, taking photographs of, uh, of uh, products, we create the, the image digitally. And they uh, are a company based in uh, the south of Brazil, if I'm not mistaken, in Florianopolis. And uh, uh, they came to the United States to the research park at Florida Atlantic University about seven years ago. And Rodrigo Griese was the partner that uh, installed and started the business in the United States. They uh, benefit of the, the, the great environment that the research park offers to you because uh, the research park exists to help the economy in Florida, in fact, the, the economy in Florida. So the research park is a company that belongs to the government of Florida. So Florida Atlantic University is the universe that belongs to, to the government of Florida. And the research park is another company that belongs to the government of Florida. And the research parks exist to impact in the economy of Florida, generate more jobs and uh, 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 bring more money here. So uh, the corner was established there and they benefit of the networking and also the research part gonna work to help your company. You need to be selected and accepted to be in the research part. The corner uh, uh, was introduced to huge companies like Bed Bath Beyond, like uh, Office Depot, and they were able to, to, to sign contracts with them. And just to, to Quarter short, uh, uh, 
the, the quota was evaluated, was acquired by a, a US company after five years in the US, and they were evaluated by a hundred million dollars. So it was a huge successful story. And uh, uh, for a Brazilian company that uh, migrated to the US and used the research park infrastructure. But we have all the business also with successful story out of the research park and uh, just just telling you about the core. Excellent. Um, Mary Saul, would you have a question to one of our guests? Sorry, I had a problem with my button. Uh, Aloysio, we had touched this before in our discussion, but I would like to you to pinpoint the three major challenges that you think an entrepreneur has when trying to enter into the U.S. market. Well, first of all, he has to be kind of sure of what he wants. There is a psychological exercise. Of course, uh, you, you cannot be 100% sure. You have to also take some risk. But uh, I would say that uh, the three pros, as I learned in school, he should have a lawyer, an accountant, and a banker to help in the, in the first steps. Of course, as uh, Suzanne mentioned, uh, uh, coaching is also important. So if you can have a coach and have three professionals in the fields I just mentioned, I'm sure you're going to have a good planning and a good feel of what we're doing. And be more confident and, and, and the chances for success are much better than if you don't have it. And a piece of advice, like in Brazil, be afraid with, take care with your cousins, friends that want the best for you, but sometimes don't help you at all. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I agree, Aloysio. I believe the lack of vision, the lack of processes, and the mindset of that I'm just a one person entrepreneur versus I'm creating a corporation. And you need to start thinking that way and acting really professional. So, this is how this country celebrates innovation but penalizes improvisation do not improvise do your research do your job and surround yourself with professionals and people that have been there before you exactly i totally agree when i mention my husband the reason that i speak with him is because he's a consultant and he works restructuring uh companies under distress so uh, he's a person that has a lot of experience in different fields. And then that's why I can hear like his opinion. But I agree with all of you. We need to go to the right professionals because opinion anyone can have. But you need to really have at your side someone that can give the right information, send you to the right direction. And as I said, maybe go and walk the process with you, coaching. So would anyone have other questions or can we end the show? I have a question for, for Douglas and myself. Uh, why Florida? Well, ladies first. <laughs> I think... Uh... Florida, first of all, it, geographically, is perfect for Latin America. It is close. It is easy to uh, come back and forth. Uh, there are great airports. Uh, you can fly from Palm Beach International, from Fort Lauderdale, from Miami. So I believe that is one of the big um, attractive points for the entrepreneurs to come here. There are a lot of Latin people here in Florida, but I really believe we have a very good business environment here. A lot of resources, like I said, so Florida is a natural fit. 
Hmm. Yeah. For me, I had two reasons. And then and I asked my friends on another countries who's listening to this, because I'm going to show some reference from Brazil. And then the Brazilian are going to understand. For me, the first thing was the, the distance between here and Rio de Janeiro. It's eight hours. I can take as many flights as I want and go there very fast. And the family, my family loves because they, I see my families uh, more here than when I live in Brazil. <laughs> They're coming more frequently to visit me. It's amazing. The friends and this is very good. This, the weather, all this thing. But I'm going to give an example. I don't know how can I geographic say this in for americans but for brazil is going to make sense and um, i'm from rio de janeiro and for years for years we know that the state of tocantins is going to be a great state because they are brand new state they growing they have a lot of opportunities over there they have everything is brand new and then you can go there and be a successful business owner I don't. Everybody talk about this at the Chamber of Commerce and uh, the 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 and the, uh, the 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 State of Rio de Janeiro Association of Industry. Everybody talk about this, but nobody moved to Tocantins. Just a few ones who starting up business. They starting in Tocantins. I know, and then I know a couple of those people that get very wealth and have a very nice successful business because they start in business in token chains okay and florida is look like token chains everything is to beginning and a company here they going to have more, much more chance to succeed and then the competition here is not because it's less competition but it's because you have more opportunities than in New York, than in Chicago, than in LA, than in the big centers and big cities. And then I think this is a good reason. And the Florida is open for business. You can open a business everywhere. When you're walking around here, you still have things that need to be done. I don't say nothing about Miami Date, and but part of Miami Date is, is completely packed. But I'm talking about Palm Beach County, I talk about Martin County, I talk about and, and every county around, and even Miami Date. You have in Miami Date areas that they are looking for industries there and, and that they can be accommodate there. Florida is open for business, is a great place to live. It's a great place to to raise the kids and and then chances are here. Welcome to Florida. <laughs> uh, Rafael, if I may add something, also we don't have state tax, and I think like all entrepreneurs look for profit. So if you can keep more of your money on your pocket, <laughs> that is a big attractive. Uh, this is good, but Florida is the fourth state in the United States. And uh, the first one is California. Then you have, uh, if I'm not wrong, New, uh, Texas, New York, and Florida. California and New York, they have the, the income state taxes. And taxes in Florida, we don't have. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the thing is, but let's talk about one of my businesses, the newspaper business. And I, I I used to go for uh, newspaper and, and and association events and and then you get in together, a newspaper like my newspaper in in a in, in a big center like Texas and California, and and Chicago area, they they have maybe four or five times more in revenues than we we have, and the business more competitive there. And but because of those things like and no tax here and this and that, my papers must more profitable than their their, their papers. <laughs> I, and then I live with what's left over, not what I make. <laughs> and Florida is really a, a better state to do this. And coming tax and and the other other costs that surround the business. Yeah, this is good. So uh, I want to thank you all for being here with us. It was a pleasure having all of you. 
and uh, we will always be back on the first Thursday of the month, uh, bringing a subject of interest to our Brazilian, American, international communities in South Florida. A recording of this show will also remain at YouTube. So now we will um, inform to you uh, the, the link where there is Boca Raton, oh, Boca Tribune TV. And you can also access by YouTube. It is uh, yeah. youtube.com dash user dash Boca Raton News TV. Yeah, but now you can go only to Boca Raton Tribune dash TV. You go straight for the YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're the first that show that you announced this. Congrats. <laughs> oh, okay. Know. So learning. Now Boca Raton that TV is going straight for you or YouTube channel. Okay. So Boca Tribune TV and you can access all of our shows from now on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So thank you again. And till next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.